y'all. Thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Don't go anywhere because today I'm going to let you in on how to fix one of the most common issues we see come into the shop, a surging mower. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash it, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. Now, I've already made a video on this Niki Briggs carburetor right here. If you have one of these, I will leave a link right up here for you to go check that out. It shows you how to rebuild it and a super cool trick that you can use a Kohler OEM carburetor kit with all the pieces that you need for half the price as the Briggs one. There's a link in the description box below that video so you can get your own. But today we're gonna to go over the Briggs & Stratton double barrel Nike carburetor that's on this mower, show you how simple it is to fix, how quick you can do it to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. So let's go tear this one off. So for this demonstration, we are going to be using a customer's YTH 22V46 Husqvarna riding lawn mower. Alrighty, to save y'all some time, I went ahead and stripped it on down because it's really boring and I don't think you want to watch all that. I did unplug the wiring harness from the headlights first to remove the hood and it's just on two hinges right here. It pops off pretty easy. Next, to remove the flywheel fan guard, this right here, that would be the next step. You will take a 5 16 nut driver to remove those four bolts. You also have six bolts going around the entire engine, around the shroud, holding it in place. These right here. You'll want to just loosen all of them up so you can uh, lift off the shroud. But before you do that, you will want to unhook your breather hose from your fuel pump. All right, and a quick little tip. If you think that your fuel pump might not be working, you can check it really simply. All you do is leave the impulse line or, or the line going to your breather tube or to your oil tube, the line going to your fuel tank, and then you have a line going to your carburetor. Unplug the line going to your carburetor and try to start your mower. And if you see gas spooching out this one, you know your fuel pump's working fine. If it is not coming out, or if you have oily nastiness coming out this little breather area right here, you need to replace your fuel pump. All right, to start removing this carburetor, the first thing we're gonna do, you're gonna see your choke rod right here on the left side. You're going to push on this plastic as you pull right here because it is just pressed into this little plastic piece right here. So we're just gonna pull it out just like that. Next, we're gonna to wanna to remove the four bolts holding the manifold and carburetor to the engine. Now you could either use a 3 8 or a T30 to remove these. All right, once we have the choke linkage undone, we come around to this breather tube on the back of the air filter base and we are going to remove it just like that. It comes out of that hole. And then next we are going to, I can't hold the camera and do this at the same time. Hold on. Okay, that's better. I'm going to unplug the wiring harness from the fuel shutoff sol solenoid. Next, we can take our throttle linkage that is connected to our governor arm. And to do that, we're gonna come up with it and we're gonna turn this sideways so it'll just slip out like that. See, not too hard and now we have the carburetor off. All right, for this project, you are going to need some parts. You are going to need a couple jets. You are going to need a choke gasket. You're going to need an O-ring that shuts off the jet area. And you're going to need this uh, funky little seal O-ring right here and a gasket nozzle. Now I will leave part numbers and links to all of these parts in the description box below. First, we're going to need to remove the air intake from the carburetor. To do that, you're going to need to have a 7 16 nut driver and remove the four nuts holding this on. All right, to remove the four carburetor mounting studs, I use a four millimeter to do that. Now, I'm sure there's some special tool you can get, but the four millimeter works. Now, if you just go unscrewing it, you're going to make the gasket lift up with it. If you have another gasket, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're trying to reserve this gasket, you're going to want to actually turn the carburetor upside down and back off each one 
the same. Couple here, couple here, and then it will bring the gasket with it and it won't destroy the gasket as you're taking it off. But I have another gasket, so I'm getting it off. Next, we're gonna remove the bowl with a large flat head. That's gross. All right, we're gonna take our pin out for our float and needle. And the majority of the time, the needle is actually not in that bad of shape. This one, I don't know, I'm on the fence. Then we're going to remove the um, jet tube and that's just two little Phillips. Now you can normally reuse the bowl gasket. It usually seals back just fine. It'll look like that. All right, we have to remove the choke butterfly and that's two more Phillips. Now that you have your butterfly out, you can slide your choke on out. And we are going to take the Phillips head screw out of the center of this air metering block. And pull that on out. Now you can see the gasket up underneath there. All right, so this is always the main culprits of this uh, carburetor going afoul. Now this air metering block gasket, it just starts deteriorating. I mean, it's like mush, really it is. And then this gasket for your jet tube, it gets real flat. And those are the two gaskets that will make you leak and surge. the fuel shutoff solenoid. Now we shave down a half inch. Um, they do make special tools for this, but if you got an old half inch laying around, just shave it down and you can get in there because this is a skinny little spot right there. So there you go. Now let's clean this bowl out. Alright, so I got everything cleaned up pretty good. I know it still looks a little scary, but it actually doesn't have any debris left in it. Um, took the cover off this side. I'm going to put that back on. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to put back in is the nozzle gasket, and you can tell which way it goes. It's got four holes on one side and two holes on the other. And that just seats down in there real nicely once you got a nice fresh gasket just like that then we're able to put our block back in and the screw that holds it in right down in the center and we can put our choke lever back in Seated back in its hole. We're going to turn it to where that cylinder shape is sticking up and then the two flat sides so we can put our butterfly back in. Just like that. Line it up with the bolt holes. We can put them back in there. Then we're going to put our 
um, o-ring gasket back down for our, our jet tube and you can see the difference like now I wanted to zoom in on this just so you can see how drastically different the gasket gets over time. I mean, that gasket is uber flattened out compared to the new gasket that it needs to be. See, old gasket, new gasket. All right, so we're gonna put this down here, just like that. That way we can put our jet tube back on. Make sure your big holes are lined up with the big holes on your gasket. The two screws that look like they have little washers connected to them, those are what hold the jet tube in place. Now, many times when you go into it, your jets might be just floating around here in here like mine were, but sometimes you might have to take them out. You'll wanna do that before you clean the carburetor, but re to replace your jets back in, there is a left and a right. To know which way to put them back in, it actually has it on the carburetor. You can see a little L right here and a little R right here. So all you have to do is flip it the way it is like that. Just flip it directly over. And this is still the left jet and the right jet. So we're gonna set that down. We're gonna pull out our two jets. I have a left right here. We're going to put it in. And it just presses down in there. I'll press it here just in a little bit and get my right one in there so I can do them at the same time. And to press them in, I have this very expensive special tool to do it, a pen. So you're going to just center it out and press it in its hole. That one went in. Oh, there we go. And you'll hear it sort of pop. Of course, I grabbed a really junky pin. Okay, press up, there we go. All right, we have both of our jets seated. And then next, you will put the O-ring on top of your jets to seal them off. And that just goes right inside that circle divot inside just like that. I am pretty confident that my fuel shut off solenoid is working. If it is stuck in the closed position which is up and you can't push it down that means it will not let it have any fuel so you'll either have to get a new fuel solenoid or work it to uh, make it go up and down again. So we're just going to put it back in the carburetor. All right. With further inspection I'm not really happy with the tip of this needle so it's going to try to save the customer a few dollars, but I'm going to go ahead and replace that too. All right, we got a new needle here. And I will have part numbers for everything in the description box below. We're going to put it back into the carburetor. And slide our lever rod back in. Center that. We're good. Now when you put your bowl back on, you don't want to put it on backwards. You have a choke side and you have a throttle side. So the uh, fuel shut off solenoid sticks out the same side as the throttle side. So we just put it on just like in this direction. It's going to be a little tough to get down because you do have that o-ring that's going to go over the metal inside of the bowl. So, And it's going to seal real good once we get our bolts in. We completely have the carburetor back together, so we are going to reattach the manifold. The fuel line sticking out this way, and the throttle side goes towards the manifold. So you are just going to line all that up and put our bolts back in first. Then we can put our gasket back on and reattach our intake. 
That faces up in that direction and put our nuts back on. All right, to get our carburetor back on, first we have to put our throttle linkage back in our governor arm. So we have to turn the carburetor this way to get that little hook to go in there. It's easier if you pull it up to get things out of the way. So I'm gonna go like this. Just like that. I'm going to reconnect my fuel shutoff solenoid. I'm going to press this uh, rod into this little plastic base right here. And we're going to return the breather tube to the back of the intake and put our four bolts back in to uh, mount our carburetor. All right, y'all ready for this? happy with that fix. She started up fierce and purred like a kitten. So thanks again for tuning into Jacanic. Hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Find us on Instagram at The Real Jacanic or find us at Jacanic.com. Thanks and have a great day.